Welcome to Standard Issue, Bridget Christie. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. We're here to talk about the change, capital T, capital C, but also the change, lowercase t, lowercase c. But the first one, The Change, your new sitcom on Channel 4, has been getting some pretty great reviews. You must be chuffed with that. Oh, yeah. It's been amazing, actually. Just, um, yeah, a <laughs> little bit overwhelming, the response to it. Very heartwarming. Yeah, just people relating to it, which was um, which was incredible, which was the really what, what I was really hoping for. So, yeah, it's been, it's been uh, quite something. I mean, there's absolutely not enough stuff about the menopause, although I do know that Sally Wainwright is also writing something about the menopause because she told me that the last she? time I spoke to her. Yeah. Oh, well, that's going to be brilliant. Exactly. Why? Why aren't we talking about it, Bridget? Because, don't know. <laughs> because the people who are writing and commissioning shows <laughs> don't want to hear about it. I, You know what? Big question. I don't know. I don't know. When we do see women, you know, around 50 older in roles it's com completely invisible from their from the script so it's not included in their story mm. so we might see them heading up a police department or we might see them you know in a james bond film or something like that but that that part of their biological process is never seen and i don't know why possibly because like a lot of human life you have to really have experienced it to know what you're talking about to think that it's interesting enough to write about and maybe by the time you get to that point I don't know women aren't being commissioned to write sitcoms I don't know either it's one of those questions I, I have been asked before and um none of us <laughs> none of us have got okay it's so hard to get anything made right we're talking now about the menopause like why aren't there more stuff why aren't there more character why aren't we seeing like symptoms why aren't female characters talking about it with their mates or their families why isn't it included in like the scripts and stuff but it is generally hard to get to get shows made right mm. across the board it's a very very rare thing to get commissioned like there's hundreds and hundreds of us trying to get stuff commissioned there are more comedy dramas set in space than there are about the menopause. Yeah, well, quite. You could say that, yeah. <laughs> I mean, part of me wonders whether it's because men aren't interested in it, but I don't even know if that's true, to be honest. I don't think it is true, no, because everyone's affected by the menopause. Half of the population of the entire world will go through it. We're all related to people, you know, we've all got friends and family. So it does seem, does seem weird. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day and I never once had a conversation with him about anything gynecological, largely because I'm not even interested in my own gynecological stories. I don't expect him to be. But I yeah. did say, he said something to me the other day about being hot and I said, mate, I am hot all the live long day. And he just yeah. went, yeah, because he's got a wife <laughs> that's my age. So actually he knows way more than I am giving him credit for, I think at that point when I say it, yeah. But that's the thing. We're getting um, we're getting messages saying, you know, watched it with my husband and like he was loving it just as much and things like that. You know, people are really responding really well. And it's only that it's only because mine is on now. People are going, oh god, is this literally the only one then? Yeah. Like I haven't seen this before, or um, haven't seen people talking about it like this, where it's at like the heart of the story mm. and not just. I think there was one scene in. Is it House of Cards? Oh, I can't remember the character's name. The white, the white, this is really bad. Yeah, she opens a fridge and Catherine... In real life, she's called Robin. I don't watch it, but I know in real life she's called Robin Wright. She opens a fridge and just does that and then closes it and that's it. And I'm like, oh, great, she's going to talk to the other woman who comes in the kitchen about it. But that was it. It was just open the fridge door, getting a bit of coldness and then gone. Yeah. And I felt disappointed by that because I wanted the other woman to come in. Yeah, uh, me too. And, yeah. you know, that would have been just like, yeah. And, I, and then I was like, oh, who wrote this? You know, and why did they just do that? And then was that deliberate? That Is that a message about how we don't really talk about it but um, in real life, you know? And so we're not talking about it in the show either, but probably not. There was probably just a, an executive producer who's gone, oh, yeah, she's opened the fridge. That's enough now. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, for such a long time, the word menopausal has been somewhat of an insult. You know, any woman who is perceived as being in any way sort of irrational or all of that, the word menopausal kind of was used to cover that in a kind of, uh, I suppose, as a replacement for the word mad bitch. My wife is yeah, being like a mad really bitch. Yeah, like really negative. Yeah, yeah, like really negative, like it's all bad. 
and you know this is terrible and then you're sort of old and you know all these horrible misogynist kind of terms for women going through that process or women at that stage of their lives and you know it's just if I think about like I'm what does a menopausal woman look like basically and that was really important to me that Linda was just a human being going through the world having this adventure with all of these things going on but she happened to be a menopausal woman like we don't all look a certain way and behave the same way I think about all the women I know over 40 you know in their 40s and 50s they're the best people I know like they're funny wise confident you know they're earning the most they ever have them they've got life experience you know they don't take any shit they know who they are and I'm like where are all my friends and sisters and like family members and where are we like why do we always just have to be like miserable or someone's wife or someone's mum or someone's granny or why can't we be going off having these adventures like mm. male characters do there are very very few of them so that's what I really wanted to see. I wanted to see women that I know. Yeah. Well, you well know? done. I really enjoyed it, I have to say. Oh, I've thank watched you. All, all six episodes. Tell me what your experience of the perimenopause, let's start there, and, and the menopause Yeah, has been. well, I didn't know what that was. Well, mine sort of started before lockdown. I did not know that I was in the perimenopause. I thought I had all these different things going on. And I was really relieved to know that I was in the perimenopause and then the, the menopause because I thought all my symptoms were, you know, not much more serious because menopause is obviously a massive thing and can be like life changing for a lot of women and completely debilitating. But I had like lumpy breasts and I was like, oh, Jesus, you know, what's this? And then I just couldn't string a sentence together. Uh, and I was yeah. like, is this early on? I couldn't remember people's. I had like face blindness. I didn't know who people were. I couldn't think of like nouns and you know, uh, uh, the, the heart, heart palpitations, I thought there was something wrong with my heart and the hot flushes, that was really weird. Just all of this stuff, really achy joints. My back was going, you know, and all this stuff. And then I did go to the doctors and he was like, oh, you know, how old are you now? And what are your periods like? And he was like, well, this is, and I had a really nice doctor, <laughs> which is not all women's experience. And he was, he was all over it. And he was like, oh, you're in the menopause and you know, you can have HRT if you want, but it seems like you're managing your symptoms because I like just manage them by lifestyle changes. So like less alcohol, less coffee, more exercise, trying not to get stressed, trying not to let people annoy me too much, like those sorts of things, mm. you know, and I'm I'm managing, but I would have HRT if, 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 I, if I wasn't able to get on top of them that way. So that's my menopause. Now it's sort of a lot of hot flushes. I can see that the way that I'm living affects my symptoms like 100%. And it's really interesting to be looking at that process and sort of looking at myself and analysing why things are happening physically to me. Mm. I found that quite quite an interesting process. I have to say I agree with that because I, I basically managed to exist through womanhood with having no bother yeah. really whatsoever. Yeah. Like no bother. I, I'd never really engaged in any of these conversations about PMT or any of that stuff because it didn't really affect me. So interestingly, this is the first time that I think my body's actually been driven by hormones. That's never happened to me before. Yeah. A couple of things in this that really stuck out. I mean, the hot flushes are, I mean, they almost get to the point where you're like, it feels like a cliche, but man. And they happen at the same time every day to me. And yeah. so, and one of them is 2am, which it just, <laughs> it just won't go away. So that's why Linda wakes up. So basically yeah. at the same time, like over during lockdown, I woke up at three on the dot yeah. every single morning for about two years. Yeah, It was driving me crazy. And I would be instantly really awake. Like, so not like a bit tired, like so awake and so boiling hot. And so, so and I would just be walking around the house for an hour. Yeah. Or going outside to cool down or... Absolutely that. The not being able to think of a word has been horrific because given that I talk for a living, so I'm in the middle of interviews, I could probably get away with it with you here because I'm talking about it. You know, we're talking about yeah. and I can't find the word. People suggest a couple of words and then I might get a bit snippy and go, no, it's fine. When it happens to you in the middle of an interview, it's so frustrating. You have one where someone can't think of the word agenda and that's like almost perfect. What's the fucking word I'm looking for? I know. And I just got like easy it. words. Yeah. <laughs> words I know. Yeah. And the last one was I had a really weird, I kept getting vertigo. 
and yes. they did lots of tests on me because I also have problems with my ears. And the doctor said, yeah, we can't really find any other suggestion of why it is. So we're going to put it in the camp that it's to do with the menopause. That's the thing. Like, hormones control everything. Like, with me, it was tinnitus, like, ringing in my oh, ears. No. And, like, a lightheadedness as well and the vertigo. Mm. I can't describe it. Like, a kind of um, a real wooziness, you know, but not nausea. But just like go like a really weird sort of imbalance sort of feeling of like, oh, God, I just need to hold on to something yeah. for a second, mm -hmm. you know, and all these things. But I did read also that we are misdiagnosing much more serious things because we're putting a lot of stuff down to the menopause. Yeah. yeah. So that is a worry as well. Yeah. I think that we just need to be really on top of keep getting ourselves checked out all the time. I had a CT scan a couple of weeks ago for something. I thought I had a hernia. And I, and and then at the end of the conversation, the doctor said, and you might want to get that slip disc sorted out. And I was like, what? I've got a slip disc? And he's like, yeah, you've got a herniated disc. And I said, I've had a bad back my since I was about 11. And I've never known that I've had. I said, do you think that that's what it's always been? And he's like, well, I don't know, but you've got a slip disc, so you need to... Oh, and I was like, how could I? I know. You went through pregnancies with that. That's incredible. Yeah. I've gone through my whole life with a really bad lower back without knowing that I've got slip disc. That's women in medicine. I mean, all I over. I know. Yeah, <laughs> abs absolutely all over. I broke my arm as an adult uh, and I went to get, when I got x-rayed, I discovered that I'd broken my arm as a child. And uh, oh my both God. my parents No one had like, picked it up. No, no one yeah. picked it up at all. I also have to say, when you, and I won't spoil it for anyone that hasn't seen it, when you're trying to remember the name of someone and the name of a film you have seen, oh. my <laughs> mum's inability to ever remember who anyone is uh, worked perfect for me. For the minute it was there, I knew who you were talking about. Because she once described <laughs> Ron Perlman to me as that man that's like the Hulk, but red. And uh, it took a while but I got it. This is the thing, like, you. this is what I want to say to young women, right? You can have a... If you get your symptoms sorted out, the menopause is really actually... can be this really positive, life-affirming thing. And fun. Like, really early on, I chose to have fun with it. Like, I've told the kids, like, this is what it is. I'm just, just give me a bit of time, because I'll get there. <laughs> like, because they're, you know, they're 12 and 16, so they're like, oh, mum, you know. <laughs> and I'm like... Just give me a bit of time, like, or I'll text. Sometimes I don't get the word, but with my, like, my executive producers and on the show, or, like, my sisters and my friends were like, just text me later what it is, and we'll, like, text each other the word later. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it begins with C, yeah. and it's quite a long word. <laughs> I'll remember it at 2am when I'm wide awake because my temperature is out of control. Yeah. The other thing that the change is about is about the change as more of a sort of a metaphorical... For everything, yeah. ...expression, yeah. yeah. And it's about, if it's not too spoilery, about a woman who walks away from her family. And I was thinking, when was the last time I saw something that was about that? Apart from maybe in one episode of a sitcom where a woman does it for like half an hour, just sort of yeah. walks away from her life. The last time I can remember anything about that was Anne Tyler wrote a book about it in the 90s about a woman who just packs up and leaves her family and decides to go off and start a new life. And I'm like, that can't be the most... Yes. The 90s, that, that can't be the, the, the last time anyone wrote about this. Well, you know what? We, when I was writing this, we tried to, and Channel 4, like, so Expectation, my producers and me, and Channel 4 were like, when was... But that's a book, like, the Anne Tyler. Yeah. And... We were going, well, there's Shirley Valentine. I was like in the 80s. Yeah, Shirley Valentine in the 80s, yeah. yeah. And also the other thing that's really important is like Lynn is only having a couple of weeks. She's not leaving Steve or her or her mm -hmm. kids. She's just having a little bit of time to herself. And that, when I was writing it, it didn't feel like a radical thing. But actually seeing a woman, like, because I we had a press screening and then seeing it for the first time with other people on a big screen, like not in the edit or anything like that, it did feel radical. And I was like, why does it feel different? Mm. And I was like, I think because we don't see that very often. When we don't see that the, the, the woman, the mum, the wife, not feeling guilty about it. We don't. Like I say, I kept thinking, there must be. There must be something else that, that, that I can bring up in this conversation. But no, there was nothing. Yeah, no. well, for me, nothing since the 90s. And, you know, men wow. walking away from their, from their families is, is, well, pretty common. Oh my God, it struck, it struck the menopause. I forgot where I was going. <laughs> uh, 
What does it look like? <laughs> <laughs> I know what it looks like. It's Lisa Tarbuck's shape. So here we go. <laughs> Undoubtedly, the menopause is, is uh, because we talked about it a lot, so it is a much more common conversation. People are writing books about it. You know, it is slowly drifting in. There is a pushback, and that pushback, strangely, seems to quite often come from older women. That attitude is kind of encapsulated in the character that is your sister, who's played by the brilliant Lisa Tarbuck, who says, what's so special about you? Women have been putting up with this stuff for years. What's so special about you? I mean, have you encountered quite a lot of that? No. Really? Because I know a couple of women who've written stuff about the menopause, and I can't say who they are, but whose mothers have said to them, we didn't make half the fuss you're making when when this happened to us. Siobhan is that way because I know that that opinion exists. And it was really important for me to have a show in which public opinion was represented, like, in all its, Mm. like... Uh, warts and all so there had to be Linda's opposite and the eel sisters like there had to be a character that was was not in agreement with mm. that and that to me is a really interesting place to be that's where you can really have fun then and where a lot of humor and conflict can, comes from I I really I really wanted to to explore that because I think we have a tendency to, to be in our own little bubbles and we mix with similar like-minded people. And I didn't want to write a show like that. Yeah. I, I wanted to portray like all different opinions and ideas about it. And yeah, that was that was quite important. But there's a lot to it, isn't there? I think there's on the one hand, it was difficult for us and you know, why should it be easier for you? Mm. I, I I do I do think it's more with columnists, I think that tend to say that sort of thing or why are we still banging on about the menopause or yeah. feminism's gone too far or just if a guy slaps your ass, just give him what for, you know, it's it doesn't work like that. We're not all the same. We're not all able to react in the same way to stuff. And actually the problem is at its source, like you shouldn't have your, it's not up to us to kind of work out how we deal with things. It's up to the thing not to happen in the first place Mm. you know what I mean and so that was interesting to me it's like yeah Linda has been doing all this stuff and perhaps she's at fault for doing it you know maybe years ago she should have said I'm not doing it all the time but it's not as simple as that because I've had a lot of friends say well you know my family say to me well don't be so fucked just leave it you know and she said well I don't want to just leave it because I don't want to live like that and that's not the answer the answer is that everybody else falls their way Mm. the thing that I hope most of all with this show is that I'm not answering anything but what I wanted to do was ask questions and start conversations you know why are women doing more in the house why can't we just sort out that relatively simple thing why aren't we talking about the menopause more why are older women on screen really boring and just uh wives or grannies or uh mothers these questions Mm. you know this is the thing about about the menopause sort of on a, on a wider scale is it it comes at a really massively inconvenient time it comes at a time where a lot of women are yeah. already raising their children and caring for their parents or some exactly. combination of the, of the two yeah and, yeah and working and yeah. all of that yeah. yeah you have an amazing cast in this you must be well chuffed with that I mean so oh many people God. I love Jim Howick Monica Dolan oh. Paul Whitehouse Tanya Moody, Tanya what an absolute Moody. joy. I know, Susan Lynch. I mean, come, it's an embarrassment of riches. Yeah. I honestly can't believe it. I just cannot believe it that they said yes. We were like, oh, my God. <laughs> in fact, what happened was I was like, you know, because I wrote with certain people in mind and I was like, oh, but can we just ask here? Yeah, but they they won't do it. Can we just ask, though? Well, we can, but we probably won't even get a response. Oh, they said yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's basically what happened, you know. We had to wait a little bit with a couple of them, like with Jerome, I had to send him an email and say, oh, you know, come on. I think because the character was called Pigman, I think that might have been a bit of a worry. <laughs> but when I expl- well, I had sort of explained who the character was and his backstory and where I wanted to go with him, and he was like, yeah, okay, I'm in. I met Tanya Moody at the National and had a really good conversation with her about that part. And then she was like, I'm in, you know, it's the menopause, you know, I'm yeah. in. Let's talk about women's lives. Of oh, the boys, Omid, Paul, Jim. Yeah, they they just got sent the scripts and they were, yeah, if I've, if the dates work, I'm in, you know. 
Jim Howick is just perfect. There's his ability to be both believable and ridiculous at the same time is is so great. Yeah, if he'd not been able to do it, I'm not sure what I'd have done with that part. Mm. I might have had to rewrite it because they really had to be a certain person because they're so conflicted and like so full of fear and anger and all of that. It just had to be someone who you couldn't hate. And and Jim just, yeah. What I was really impressed with was that he has backstory why he's gone this way only quite yeah. recently. Yeah. That's a conversation we'd be having on a wider scale, to be honest, about yeah, you know, yeah. oh, God, what, what's yeah. happened to certain people, what the internet has done to us. It's all sending us slightly mad. Perhaps those people yeah. are more to be pitied than be scorned. How do we make sure that you get a series two? Oh, come on, Channel 4. I, <laughs> I, you know what? I, I can't have, you know, I don't know. I, I just, um, I don't know. <laughs> it's just Watch random, it. isn't it? For one, watch it. Talk I about think the it. numbers have been pretty good, you know. Mm. Um, so, and the, like you say, the response, I'm not sure what that little show could have done more, really, to get a second series in terms of, yes, yeah, just up to them, really, at the end of the day. We'll just have to cross everything. And yeah, yeah. absolutely. I'm and what really, about touring? Yeah. Have you got a tour coming up? Yeah, I'm, so I'm touring in the autumn. That's uh, really looking forward to that. Um, Who Am I tour starting in September? Uh, as well, I've got I've got some festivals and dates. I'm doing Regents Park in a couple of weeks, and I've got Edinburgh a week, and then I've got the tour. Yeah, so it's busy, busy, yeah, but long. it's all good. Yeah, it's Great. all good. Bridget, this has been an absolute pleasure. Oh, everyone should watch the thank change. Thank you so much. Yeah, it yeah, made me it made me laugh so a lot, and yeah. And and you are really you are really good. Now me sitting saying how great everybody else is. Uh you're really great in it as well. Oh thanks. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I mean, I yeah. suppose it's a lot of pressure. Surround yourself with a lot of massive acting talent. I mean, you really laid yeah. the pressure on yourself there. I really didn't really think about that too much. I think that if I had, I might have been a bit more apprehensive about it. But I think I was so like in it, like the writing mm. and exec producing and all of that. At that any like I just didn't I probably should have thought about it more but I just felt like I knew who she was you yeah know? well better than better than anyone else would definitely oh bless you yeah I feel like uh could just talk for ages <laughs>